There have been a lot of questions that have started to be asked of the OSTF and many of those questions are getting the typical kind of response. A lot of people are asking questions very politely and nicely. They are getting <laughs> attacked and abused in return for asking those questions belittled, demeaned, defamed, slandered, I mean, you name it. This uh, Mark McMurtry here is pretty good at being a hypocrite. So even though he says all you've got to do is ask questions, any time anyone respectfully asks questions, he comes back with a mouthful of abuse and then there's someone else that will turn around and say, well, what right do you have to ask the question? It's like they play this circle. You can ask the question, but if you ask the question, I'm not going to give you an answer and someone else will come in and ask you, what right do you have to ask that question? And uh, I was looking at some comments left on... Um, well, you can't see them anymore on Dreaded Cheetah's channel for the Nightcap on Mingimble video before uh, the comments were deleted, what people screenshotted of it. And Dreaded Cheetah's most common thing was, say, prove it, prove it, prove it. And it's like, oh, you bunch of twits. It has been proven. In fact, if you even bother to look at anything other than sit there and go and prove it. Do you have any evidence? Oh yeah, there's a shit ton out of it out there. Shit ton. But these flakes I don't think know how to read. I mean, what kind of evolved person is gonna call themselves dreaded? I mean anyone that calls themselves dreaded is something that is not wanted. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not on that subject today. I'm on the subject of the OSTF and Mark McMurtry. As you can see here from the blog, the uh, post is called The Crown of the OSTF. And if you notice here, here's little Mark McMurtry. Look at him, eh? And look at his crown. Look at his lovely crown of the original Sovereign Tribal Federation. And he sits, King Mark McMurtry, over the First Nation tribes of Australia. Look at you all. All around Australia. Look at, look at you all. This is his ambition, to be the crown of of the OSTF. Do you think that a ruler of one kind is any better than a ruler of another? So I'm not sure how you describe this blog spot. Just thinking about. But it's actually called Hmm Thinking. Maybe that's what we should all do a little bit more of. Um, well, I've done a lot of it over the years. It's actually a hard thing for me to go from the thinking to the speaking, <laughs> sharing what I do have. But generally speaking, most people need to do a lot of thinking before they do speaking. First post that I put on there, uh, this is a s separate one to the other post, but not because it is still in... Um, line with tribal sovereignty issues, well, tribal issues. The um, alignment that was, that occurred today, in, there was the gathering in, at Uluru to implement uh, new energy grids and it's all this, you know, big thing about it. Well, it's very interesting to see to uh, hear the opinion of the traditional owners of the land and 
what they were asked for in participating in this ceremony at Uluru. Were they involved? No, they weren't, and they do not endorse it. But that was uh, separate. Well, separate, yes, but no, because there is certain um, tribes that will not accept the OSTF. They're smart enough. They're clued in enough, you know. They're not going down that road. But there are still ones even in their community that are getting drawn in by the mesmerising words of people. Now, the thing to remember when you are listening to someone that knows things you don't, they're always going to seem like an expert. And in your ignorance, because you don't know about that subject, you don't know whether they're telling the truth. And we're all guilty of how we'll sit back and we'll listen to someone talk about something we know nothing of, we'll listen to their perspective, and from what we understand that they're saying of their perspective, we can agree and align with what they're talking about. But unless you actually go and check out the information that that person is actually telling you, if you put in the research to find out, well, they've said these things are true, are they? If you just accept it as being true, you will not ask the questions to find out if it is true. And in that, you are either going to reject it because you don't know anything about it, so in your ignorance you're not going to take any risks, or in your ignorance you will accept it as truth based on the opinion of someone else and their interpretation. But you do not know for yourself, through your own research and your own knowledge and awareness, whether that is truth. So when you are first introduced to things that you don't know anything about, you have a choice. You can learn more or you can just take someone else's truth or presentation of what they believe the truth is and work with that. And the thing is that a lot of people will go with someone else's truth because it's easier to accept that that person has researched and has found the right answers. Well, the thing is that there is, in so many ways, you cannot get someone else to find the right answers for you. Only you can find the right answers. You can find an answer, a perspective from other people, but the answers are only ever going to be found with yourself. And to find those answers, you need to ask questions. And you might not think that you have any questions that you could ask. Well, I had a list of about, oh, I suppose, 20 questions that I could ask. And then as I went to detail them and put them onto the blog here, the questions under each category just grew. I could have about a page for each thing I brought up. You know, the questions that I could ask once I really stopped to look at it. Like, who would have thought I could ask so many questions about, well, um, I was actually talking to someone this evening and I said, um, uh, is, has anyone signed anything, do you know, amongst the tribes that you've heard of? And is there any, um, anything in writing? And... How do you join? And 
even though there's all these questions around so many different things, we were both stumped on even simple answers for that. Because how do you join? Well, I suppose you've got to go and talk to the OSTF. You've got to parlay with them. Got a treaty with them. <laughs> anyway, so... Yes, just simple things that, and this is why motivational speakers are so successful, because it's not that they're revealing anything startling or anything new, but they are just merely pointing out a lot of common sense, things that we may need to refresh ourselves on, so that when you ask questions, and even simple things like, how do you actually join the OSTF? <laughs> anyway, I'll get on to that in a sec. Because before you can ask questions, what are the things that you can actually agree on that perhaps all people may be able to agree on that would be classified as facts? And there are certain facts that can actually be uh, garnered from all of the research that has been done. And those facts, whether OSTF likes them or not, or turns around and any of its representatives want to call people all the different kinds of names under the sun and that they don't know what they're talking about and they haven't done their research, it's, yes, we have done our research. And that's why they do not attempt to answer the questions. They always deflect with abuse and insults so that the question never gets answered. In fact, they're no better than a politician you ask a direct question to. It's a common sense thing and a simple question. And the next thing, the politician's going off on a sidetrack and he's calling all these people different names and saying they don't know what they're talking about, you haven't looked at this and I've had people check me out and I'm right, I was proven right back then and so now everything I say right now is 100% right. Nothing I say could be possibly wrong because I've been proven to be right in everything I've ever said in the past, which is ac actually... Not much at all because there is never any answers given to questions so there cannot be really anything said. <laughs> yeah, you're getting where I'm going with this. So looking at the basic facts. So let's zoom through them before we get to the big long list of all the questions. Mark McMurtry is the founder and convener of the OSTF. Mark McMurtry is currently a developer of Nightcap on Minjimbal. Mark McMurtry's co-developer at Nightcap on Minjimbal is undischarged bankrupt Adrian Brennock. Mark McMurtry and the OSTF join forces with the Austra Great Australian Party. Mark McMurtry's political ally at the Great Australian Political at par, at the Great Australian Party is undischarged, bankrupt Rodney Cullerton. Are we seeing a a, a commonality here <laughs> of associations with bankrupts? Yes, not just financially. In so many respects, one would say, if one would say it. <laughs> but I didn't. Anyway, Mark McMurtry has been telling the same story for over 10 years. Every attempt in court fails. The nightcap on Minjimbal development is valued by Planet at $36 million. There is no current DA approval for the development. Council will not give DA approval for multiple occupancy. State SEPP laws decline any application on the land due to water catchment. 
any and all applications must go to the local council because of this. Council have repeatedly advised Nightcap on Minjimbal that multiple occupancy development will not be permitted. No further applications will be accepted for consideration. Permission has not been given by the traditional owners for this development. So it's claimed that over 200 tribes have joined the OSTF. So when I did ask the question to others, well, do you know who they are? Nobody seems to have any answers. And of course, the only people you can ask to get the answers off, they give you a mouthful of BS and never answer it. You know, they do the politician dance. So here we go to just ask some basic questions about the OSTF and what they do. How do I join? Do I fill out a form, shake hands, make a verbal promise? How? Is it a membership, foundation, charity? What am I joining? Does it cost money? Do I have to sign anything? Did you sign an agreement to align with this Declaration of Sovereignty and Nationhood. I'll pull myself up there. I should have been keeping it all in the eye, but I'll confuse myself. But anyway, this Declaration of Sovereignty and Nationhood, if you click on it, it's a functioning link that goes to OSTF's current website. This actually used to be a link that would come up under media. There is no functioning link that if you go directly to their website, without this link, you won't get to it. Uh, I got it off the Wayback Machine to be able to link into it. So even though these pages are still there, they're not uh, anywhere on the page that you can link to. So I just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to read out that declaration because it's 28 pages long and it's a pile of puss and bullshit. You know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was meant to be questions, not opinions. <laughs> so, more questions. So, about the OSTF. What are the benefits to me for joining the OSTF? What does the OST expect from me if I join? Can I join as an individual or can only tribes join? What is the benefit to my tribe if I join the OSTF? What is the goal, purpose and intent of the OSTF? Have the OSTF fulfilled any of intended goals? Can the OSTF succeed in any action they take legally? Do I get a say in what affects me and my tribe? Do I have an equal say? Is any assistance available to tribes who join OSTF? What is that assistance? Will money donated to OSTF be used to put back into the communities and their needs? How will the money donated to the OSTF be spent? Do I have the opportunity to vote on decisions affecting my tribe? It has been roughly about 10 years since OSTF was formed and been operating. Mark McMurtry does have videos prior to then, uh, back in 2008, but the OSTF isn't in existence then. So in the 10 years that OSTF has been operating, has any legal action been successful? Has any donation to OSTF gone back to help the tribes where needed? Has OSTF provided an account of where they spent donations? 
have all members had an equal say? Has it delivered on the promise to unite the tribes? Has it delivered on the promise to obtain sovereignty? Has it delivered anything but excuses?